Now, this is amazing stats. 97% of all dieters not only regain the weight back, but then some. Why is this? Well, I think it's because they don't have a second goal. They spend all this work reaching this goal. They lose the weight. Is their weight loss somehow going to be fixed where they don't have to do anything, where they can just have it run an automatic and go back to their lifestyle? Or do they have to maintain it? It's very similar to a marriage where you meet someone then you decide to get married and then you get married and then you expect it to continue on automatic, right? Well, that definitely doesn't work. I mean, you have to find out what your partner wants, what you want and exchange back and forth, right? Because if you're only expecting to give them what you want and you don't give anything in exchange, you end up with what's called a divorce. Well, the same thing happens with the body. You have to find out what it wants and needs, and then it will give you what you want, pleasure sensations, the feeling of being healthy, et cetera. So what does your body really want? Well, it wants actual real food. What's the definition of food? It's a combination of fuel and nutrients. Now, what's very interesting about this is that the true flavors of food happen to come with the nutrients. The nutrients aren't necessarily flavorful. So the flavors attract us to the food with the highest nutrients. Now, the cool thing about this is it's a perfect match because the thing that you really want, which is food that's flavorful, right? Well, it just so happens to be the exact same foods with the key nutrients. I mean, I don't know if you've ever actually tasted a real tomato and how pleasurable all those flavors are. I mean, that is a pleasurable sensation. Now, it is true that Doritos are very flavorful, and so is KFC, but they come with a little bit of a package. So I think we should just stick with real food, right? So you give your body what it really needs, nutrient-dense foods, and then it will give you what you really want, which is health. And so if you really want the best solution to maintaining your weight, don't have a weight loss goal. Have a get healthy goal. Something that you can exchange with your body by giving it what it wants. So it can then give you not just a healthy body, but weight loss as a byproduct of getting healthy. And oh, by the way, carb cravings is not really a natural thing. It's something that our bodies are conditioned. Once you start, it becomes more of a craving and an addiction, but it's not a natural thing. So when you get healthy, you're going to find that the whole carb cravings are not even a problem anymore because they're not natural in the first place. Hello, I have a question. Do you want to save time trying to lose weight? This video is for those people who don't watch my videos. Okay. So it's for a new person to my channel. All right. So here's the thing. The majority of the population are spending tremendous amounts of time, wasted time trying to lose weight. Okay. I'm talking massive amounts of wasted time. And it's actually very sad because it's actually very simple. There's really just two little things you need to know for sure to be able to burn fat and lose weight and save a lot of time. So you're not spinning your wheels. Okay. You have to know the most important thing to do and you have to know the most important thing not to do. Knowing what not to do is a thousand times more important than knowing what to do. Okay. So we're going to get rid of the trivial stuff and we're going to focus on just the primary most important thing. We're going to use guidance physiology. This is a physiology book on page 927. This is what it says. It's under the category increasing metabolic use of fat caused by insulin lack. Okay. Insulin is a hormone that regulates blood sugars. It says all aspects of fat metabolism are greatly enhanced in the absence of insulin. Okay. So what's, what does that mean? That means what we have to do is we have to make sure we keep your insulin as low as possible. Okay. And then we can enhance greatly the fat burning effect, the metabolism. So now the question is, how do we do that? Okay. How do we avoid insulin? You're going to have to avoid sugar, refined carbohydrates, breads, pasta, cereal. The other thing that triggers insulin is the combination of sugar and protein, like a hamburger and fries, a Coke and a cheeseburger, 
uh, starches and protein at the same time. Uh, excess protein, large amounts of protein, like over 10 ounces, will stimulate insulin. Monosodium glutamate, that's a flavor enhancer, that's in all the fast food places. So here you are eating protein, let's say you even take the bun off at Chick-fil-A, you're still getting an uh, insulin spike because it has MSG at the Chinese restaurant, MSG. Frequent eating, like the whole five to seven meals or six meals a day, very bad because you're gonna trigger insulin big time. Fruit is a sugar, I mean, it's very sweet, it's gonna increase insulin. Beans will increase insulin. Alcohol, juice, orange juice, all these things will increase insulin. So we have to cut those out, all right? Number two, what do we do? There's an opposing hormone to insulin. Okay, it's called glucagon. So if, if insulin blocks fat burning and makes you get fat, glucagon does the opposite. It makes you skinny, it helps you lose weight. So we're gonna talk about how to increase glucagon. Number one, intermittent fasting. Three meals, no snack, or even two meals, no snacks in between. The time that you don't eat means that you're not gonna trigger insulin because eating triggers insulin. So we wanna keep insulin low. Keep your carbohydrates at 20 grams or less, okay? You'll lose more weight that way. So, but I'm not talking about vegetables. Eat lots of vegetables because we need potassium. Potassium lowers insulin. So we need huge salads, like at least seven to 10 cups. Vitamin B1 lowers insulin, nutritional yeast. That's because when you do a lot of carbohydrates, you deplete your B vitamins. So if you take B vitamins, it actually allows insulin not to work as hard. Fat, by the way, is neutral. So you can have some fat with a meal that allows you to go from one meal to the next, so you can do intermittent fasting very comfortably, but you will not be able to do this if you do lean meat and vegetables. You're gonna to be too hungry between the meals. Adjust the fats to go from one meal to the next. Apple cider vinegar improves blood sugars and actually decreases insulin as well. Have, take some apple cider vinegar and water with the meals and right before you go to bed, and some water. Just watch what happens. You'll actually wake up and you'll feel like you're losing weight. Uh, moderate protein will stimulate glucon, glucagon. So I'm talking about like three to six ounces. That's not a lot. Just three to six ounces will trigger glucagon. Too much protein will trigger insulin. Exercise, intense exercise, will increase glucagon. So we, you probably know exercise helps you lose weight, but you probably didn't know because it triggers that hormone. So you wanna do a workout, but make sure you don't overtrain. Make sure you maybe you do every other day, but you wanna make sure it's intense. And sleep, you burn a lot of fat when you sleep. So don't try to um, cut your sleep short. You want a nice sleep, so you're sleeping at least eight hours. That's gonna help this hormone right here. That's the simplicity. Everything else that you do will be trivial and it will not help you save time. These are the most important actions. So now you can take any diet and see if they align with these principles and see if they're gonna work or not. Let's take the Atkins diet. The problem with that is it doesn't recommend enough vegetables, okay, to clean out the liver and give you potassium. And it also recommends too much protein, okay? So you'll lose weight and you might just plateau. Let's take the South Beach diet. Well, they allow too many carbohydrates. In fact, you do the first stage, which is actually allowing too many carbs, and then all of a sudden you go right back to more carbs. So you gain the weight back. It doesn't make sense. Then you have the HCG diet. It's 500 calories, okay? That is going to starve your metabolism because you're going to slow your, your thyroid down. You always want to have enough nutrients in those calories. You don't want to go low calories. It will work initially, but the next time you do it, it won't work anymore because you'll screw up your metabolism. What about protein powder? No, it's too high in protein. What about the zone? Too high in carbs. They have the zone bars, too high in carbohydrates. What about Weight Watchers? No, because they allow too many carbohydrates, okay? So based on these two things, you can pretty much predict what diet's gonna work and what diet's not. Thanks for watching. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.